All right, hi everyone, Blender 3.0 is available. So in this video, we're gonna do a quick run through of the features, just so you know what you can get your hands on. Every time they do a major version like this, they put out this beautiful web page, which has a breakdown of all the major features, providing like comparison images and videos and stuff like that. So let's take a look at it. All right, so cycle faster than ever. So in several of my videos, I've already talked about the Cycles X project and how it's improving performance for cycles, which is fantastic. The performance improvements are so significant, and you can see this here on this comparison chart. Cycles GPU kernels have been rewritten for better performance, rendering between two and eight times faster in real world scenes. So this is rendered with an NVIDIA Quadro RTX A6000 using the Optex render device. I mean, it's all impressive, but check out the barbershop and monster scenes here. Kind of makes you wonder how we actually managed with 2.93 Gs, check that out. I have been trying it on my new computer and it's just quite insane. Speaking of which though, people might find it a bit weird, but I'm not actually using my new computer at the moment. I'm using my old work machine. The reason is because I've packed the new one away for when we move to the new studio, because I think it'd be nice to walk into a fresh new environment with a brand new, high powerful computer and just get working straight away. All right, let's lag more fun. Enjoy more responsive viewport due to new scheduling and display algorithms. So let's take a look at this clip. I mean, you can see the difference here. It really is that good. Again, I kind of wonder like how I managed with the 2.93 noise beforehand, but with the new response I have a lot more confidence with using things like volumes in the scenes now. There's a saying that stuck with me, which is work expands to fill the time allocated for it. So it doesn't matter how much time you have, the work you have available will always expand to fill that gap. And I feel like something very similar applies to rendering. Like it doesn't matter how much performance you have, you will very quickly fill it all up again. So now that we have better rendering performance and viewport responsiveness, I don't actually know if it's going to make that much of a difference for me, like in the long run, because I'm probably just going to fill it with like a bunch more volumes and extra objects. And then we're probably going to get back to something like 2.93 all over again. Anyway, nice noise. Open image denoise was upgraded to version 1.4 with improved detail preservation. A new pre-filter option was added to control the denoising of auxiliary, albedo, and normal passes. So basically the denoising has more clarity and detail, and we can see this especially on the um, cushions here. So it's not so bad on the flat surface here that's facing straight towards the camera, where the details are quite repeating, but as soon as it gets a bit more difficult to understand, as we're slanting back, the new version is preserving those details so much better. There's also some significant details on the glass, but the glass is already kind of a subjective surface to look at, I suppose. So even though it looks different, you wouldn't immediately say which one is better or worse, unless you look at it a bit more closely. The new version is definitely superior. And also we can see some contrast differences on the wood down here. So the old denoising kind of doled out the contrast in the details. So if we go to the new one here, you can see them a lot better. So generally it's just an improvement all around. All right, so the shadow terminator, a new option to reduce shadow artifacts often happen with low poly game models. So in particular, you can see this here with the polys on the shell. Offset rays from the flat surface to match where they would be for a smooth surface as applied by the normals. Okay, so let's take a look. You can see that this is no longer a problem. This is something you'll definitely see in a lot of rasterization engines in like all sorts of video games. So this is a pretty nice feature to have. It means we can display all of our low poly models in a much more presentable way. Catch Beyond Shadows. Say hi to the new Shadow Catcher, completely rewritten for Blender 3.0. New features include indirect and environment light support for more accurate compositing. Option for lights to be considered included or excluded. That is if they are real or synthetic objects. New Shadow Catcher Pass to fully handle colored indirect light and emission. All right, that's cool. Colored shadows and precise reflections make blending 3D with real footage much easier. So we can see this down here as color is preserved in those shadows. That's very cool, very good for realism. All right, skin care, subsurface scattering now supports anisotropy. How do you say anisotropy? 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 I don't know, we'll just go with it. And index of refraction for random walk. Realistic skin has an anisotropy around 0.8. All right, so that's pretty cool. In particular, I want you to take a look at this kind of section of where the eyebrow would be. But the regular subsurface, we're so used to seeing things that are very like gel-like, I suppose, or like gummy sweets. Not necessarily great for realistic skin because it's definitely a lot harder for light to kind of re-escape from those surfaces. So it's really cool to see that shading improvements have been made in that regard. Okay, some extra cool rendering things. We're not going to go over them, but just a lot of stuff. But now we come to like the big boys. So Asset Browser. Finally, we have an Asset Browser and I did a video a while back about it. It's going to be a really cool feature for like rapidly prototyping artwork and just bring in all sorts of content from your other projects. Really happy about this one. I think it's definitely about time that Blender got it. Easy as drag and drop. As you can see, you can bring in all sorts of materials and objects and all sorts of content. And I think it also adds a kind of gamification element to adding stuff to your scenes. So I think potential level designers are going to have a lot of fun with this one. So you can have multiple asset libraries. So these are basically just folders which contain blend files. The asset browser will read through the blend files and see anything that's marked as an asset. And then that will be accessible to you in the asset browser. 
You can organize your assets into catalogs, and these are independent of the blend file that the asset is stored in, so there's great flexibility there. And then you can also tag your different assets. So metadata can be added to the assets such as author, tags, and asset description. All right, then the other big boy, geometry nodes. The procedural system introduced in 2.92 has been extended with a reimagined method for designing node groups, a new attribute system around 100 new nodes for interaction with curves, text data, instances, and more. So this is where the introduction of the fields has come in, which is replacing the named attribute workflow. Discover a new concept for passing around data and functions, introducing fields. Operations can be built from basic nodes and simply connected together, removing the need for named attributes as a way to store intermediate data, and removing the need for special attribute nodes for simple operations. Now, the attribute system for the original geometry nodes was something I struggled with, and you might think that's a bit strange because, like, I'm an add-on developer, you would have thought the, the text-based attribute workflow, quite similar to working with variables in a certain way, is something that I might have actually been pretty good at. Not necessarily the case. And we actually spoke a bit about this on a recent Blender Nest episode. I believe that was episode 55, so comments, teaching methods, and geometry nodes, where we talked about like different ways of perceiving tasks and how to teach yourself skills. And I talked about the psychology behind being an artistic programmer. And for me, being very much an instructional logic kind of guy, having a more abstract workflow like what Fields allows for is much more beneficial for me mentally. So to keep it simple, Fields is a lot more similar to the way that the shader nodes work. And also something that might be quite confusing, but it is pretty powerful, is that the nodes actually kind of work backwards in certain ways for what you would call the function flow. So say if you wanted to modify like the position value for a certain piece of data or geometry, you could plug in that position node further back and then use that to modify different values and then plug that in later on where the geometry connects. So it's actually pretty cool. You can build up these functions of nodes, which you can plug into the geometry later on when you don't actually know what the geometry is yet. So I think it's pretty cool and I've been working with it for the new Bygen update, of course. With fields, it's much easier to build node groups for higher level concepts that work together better than before. Okay, some other cool things. They've actually added this really cool system where depending on the type of socket that you're connecting to another socket in the node trees, each type has a different color and the link between those sockets will become the color or will transition between the colors. So you can see that here at a glance, a new overlay colors the wires to match the socket they're connected to, making it easier to spot their type at a distance. And it also just looks really pretty. Also, mouse over the sockets to quickly inspect their content, know their type, and a handy tooltip about their functionality has been added to a number of nodes. And in order to tell at a glance which sockets support fields, single values, or both, sockets are now drawn with a diamond, circle, or combined shape. So basically, nodes have become much more useful and just beautified. It's really nice. So you can have a look at this yourself. There's just so many nodes you can play with. I'm not going to go into too much detail with this, but you know, you can do stuff with curves and text nodes and materials instancing, all sorts of stuff. Mesh attributes are no longer a Cycles exclusive. Eevee now fully supports attributes, including those generated by geometry nodes. Thank God for that. Then there's lots of demonstrations here about how it's being used. All right, user interfaces at a visual refresh. The theme definitely looks a lot better now, I will say. One thing I like in particular is how these panels have these extra boxes around them. I will need to update my own personal theme a bit because I've got a theme of my own, which you can download from Gumroad, which is darker because I don't think the Blender default themes go dark enough anyway. But I want to do some extra changes to it to um, make sure that I can still see these boxes. Okay, so it looks like the video sequence editor has been updated as well. So it now supports thumbnail previews, strip transform tools, custom color tags, override overlap mode, better snapping. Maybe one day I'll be able to use Blender to actually edit my videos. I mean, technically I could now, I guess, but might just take a bit too much time. Blender 3.0 offers a brand new set of VR controller based functionality, including the ability to visualize controllers and the ability to navigate one's way through a scene in VR using controller inputs. So that's very cool. So you can press the start of VR session and there you go. You can have a look around your scene and you can see the controllers there in your hands. I do have an old Vive, but I just don't have the room to use it. But I would love to try this out sometime. It'd be very cool for like visualizing your artworks. So strike a pose. To kind of go along with the asset browser, they've added a pose library. So this will be very useful for animations. So Grease Pencil has improvements. The 2D animation workflow keeps getting better with new modifiers, a polished drawing experience, and line art performance that's been greatly improved since the last release. Dot Dash, a new modifier allows you to generate dot dash lines on strokes automatically, assign different materials, offset, and more. So let's take a look at this. There's a textured effect demo. So you go, you can make your lines look kind of textured with the dot dash. I think that's very cool. Kind of makes me want to play around with the 2D more in Blender. Oh, wow, actually, yeah, I didn't realize that. You can get some really cool effects. God, Blender just has something for everyone, doesn't it? Oh, this is really cool as well. Logo design document, being able to generate dashed lines. Love that. So quick save. Loading and saving compressed blend files is now magnitudes faster thanks to using the Z standard algorithm instead of gzip. Fantastic. We love that. Interoperability takes a leap forward in 3.0 with the support for importing Pixar's universal scene description and improvements to Alembic. So there's a proper USD importer here with support for meshes, cameras, curves, volumes, materials, and lights. Alembic support for exporting animated UV maps, import per vertex UV maps, etc. 
and there's more. So yeah, 3.0 is a massive leap forward. So it's very exciting times for Blender. I mean, it feels like every year I tend to say something like, you know, if you haven't already given it a try, now is the time to jump in. And it seems like every year that just gets more and more true. So it's going to be very exciting to see how far Blender goes in the future. Okay, so believe it or not, I think this is probably the first time I actually forgot to do an outro for a video. <gasps> the horror, how could he? So yeah, thanks for watching everyone. If you made it this far through the video, then leave a unicorn emoji in the comments just so I know that you've made it this far. Remember, you can follow me in all the places if you want to stay up to date with information and news and project updates and stuff like that. Maybe even support my work on Patreon or join our Discord server. But most of all, have a lovely day and I will see you next time.